storm hydrograph, graph which shows how a river's discharge changes over time, and that's typically before, during or after a storm event. Why are storm hydrographs so useful? Because they provide valuable insights into the relationship between rainfall and river flow. And that's important because lots of people build their homes within drainage basins and a huge amount of time and money is spent building these homes. So storm hydrographs provide valuable insights that enable you to predict floods and understand how bad those floods will be so that people can make informed decisions about what to do, whether they can stay in their homes and put out sandbags or whether they need to leave. But now we're going to go onto my iPad and actually have a look more closely at a storm hydrograph. So let's have a look at a typical storm hydrograph. So typically you'll find three things on these graphs. To the right hand side we can see precipitation, so that tends to be rainfall and that's given in millimetres. On the left hand side we're looking at river discharge, so that's the volume of water flowing through the river at any one particular place. And then at the bottom we have a time scale. Now there are two types of flow which affect the discharge of a river in a storm hydrograph. First of all we have the base flow which is the normal discharge of the river which we can see bottom right in the baby blue spotty section. That is the river's usual discharge. With the storm flow which we can see on the key on the left hand side, this is when you're going to see a huge increase in the river's discharge that tends to be in line with a huge amount of precipitation. And so we call the storm flow the extra discharge of a river which results from a storm. So as I've already said, storm hydrographs show river discharge, precipitation and time. They have a base flow which is the normal discharge of a river as well as a storm flow which is the extra discharge of a river which results from a storm. Now we're going to look at the features of different storm hydrographs. So we'll start by looking at this portion where the bar chart is. We can see that this is the peak rainfall or peak precipitation. As you might imagine, this is the maximum rainfall that occurs. Moving over to the graph line as opposed to the bar chart, always has this characteristic shape. You can see this portion of the graph where it is steeply increasing that gradient. We call that the rising limb and this is the increase of river discharge. It doesn't necessarily have to occur straight after precipitation. Then you have the peak discharge here, which is the maximum discharge. Remember, you will see that delay because it does take time for the water to find its way to the river. You may also see this described as peak flow thing with geography is there's lots of names for the same thing. Because there is that delay between the peak precipitation or peak rainfall and the peak discharge, due to that time taken for the water to flow into the rivers, we call that delay the lag time. So we've dealt with peak rainfall, rising limb, lag time, peak discharge, but what about this falling limb? We can see that negative gradient of the graph line. This is known as the falling limb. And what it's trying to say is that as that storm precipitation levels decrease, in turn, river discharge will decrease because less water will be entering the rivers. And then last up, base flow, we can see down here. That's when the river discharge returns to normal. So what factors affect the shape of storm hydrographs? Well, firstly, the amount of precipitation or rainfall. Obviously, the higher the rainfall, the greater the river discharge.
Next up, human activities, urbanization and deforestation both increase river discharge and that's because of increased surface runoff. The size of the drainage basin will also affect the storm hydrograph and actually you find that large drainage basins are associated with less discharge Small drainage basins are associated with more discharge, which might seem a little counterintuitive. Rock type also has an effect. If you have an impermeable rock like granite, you will see more discharge because that water is not going to soak in. If you have a permeable rock like limestone, you'll get less discharge. So do be prepared to compare these various factors. We can sometimes describe these hydrograph shapes in terms of whether they're flashy storm hydrographs or if they're subdued storm hydrographs. So the classic shape we have here is for a flashy storm hydrograph. We'll talk about the various characteristics shortly. If this graph changed a little bit in shape, so it was more like this, that would be what we would call a subdued storm hydrograph. That's because we have a longer lag time a lower peak and a gently sloping rising limb, as we can see here. So yeah, longer lag time, lower peak discharge peak, and a gently sloping rising limb. And we'll talk about the reasons as to why you get the flashy storm hydrograph versus the subdued storm hydrograph right now. So our flashy storm hydrograph, we know we're gonna have a short lag time We'll have a high peak discharge and a steep rising limb. So those are all descriptions of the graph we would see. Why do we get these various features that we see on the graph? Well, for a number of reasons. You could have had an intense storm or a rapid snow melt steep slopes so if we consider the geology steep slopes mean that we'll get lots of runoff into those rivers a small drainage basin will also give rise to flashy storm hydrographs in terms of human behaviors deforestation and urbanization will increase surface runoff and therefore mean that you're more likely to get a flashy storm hydrograph so there's lots of different factors you can talk about affecting the shape If we look at the subdued storm hydrograph then, what do we expect to see on the graph this time? As I've already said, you'll have a longer lag time, lower peak discharge, shallower rising limb. So the reasons for that subdued storm hydrograph will be opposite to the ones we talked about in the flashy one. So rather than an intense storm, we would talk about steady rainfall, gentle slopes, large drainage basins, lots of vegetation. Because remember that vegetation will intercept that rainfall and delay that water reaching the rivers. So let's look at some past paper questions. We're being asked to study figure 1b and identify the feature of the storm hydrograph labelled X. So here's figure 1b. What is X? I'm hoping you can see that that is the peak rainfall. It's the top of the bar chart. Next question. Study figure 1a. Suggest two reasons for the different storm hydrograph shapes. Four marks. So here are our storm hydrographs. I'm hoping you can see this is a flashy storm hydrograph. We've got that shorter lag time, the higher peak discharge, the steep rising limb. This is a subdued storm hydrograph. We've got a much lower peak discharge, a shallower rising limb and a longer lag time. So we are going to state those differences and then give a reason for it. So in the first storm hydrograph, there is a shorter lag time and that could be due to urbanization and deforestation 
increasing surface runoff and means less interception takes place. Make sure you write a nice full answer here. What else did we talk about? We said about the rising limb, we could say in the first storm hydrograph, there is a steeper rising limb. So we have that flashy storm hydrograph. And we said that that could be due to there being steep slopes, which increase the rate at which water enters the rivers. Right guys, I hope you found that video super helpful. I'll be back soon with another geography video.